Well, good morning. morning. Welcome. The music stopped, so I figured maybe that was my cue that it was time to start worship. So um, so glad to see you all here this morning. Uh, Whether you've been uh, been worshiping at Trinity your whole life or this is your first time here, uh, we are just honored to have you in our midst. And we are, we are honored that our Lord has gathered us together and we get to lift our voices in song and open our hearts and our ears to what he has to say this morning. Um, it, it's, it's an exciting morning that in that we, just last Sunday afternoon, we ordained and installed Pastor Benjamin Prohl here at Trinity. Uh, Pastor Ben was up in uh, Hawk and Polly Lake, which, where he will be campus pastor, and he'll be about two out of three Sundays. He was up there last week. Uh, this morning he is preaching here in Tyler, so we get to uh, hear God speaking his word to us through Pastor Ben. So glad that you're here today. Uh, so glad that you're here, period. Um, let's stand and let's uh, begin in song. We gather today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. At this time, you may kneel if you are able.
Let us confess our sins together. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, he has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgive you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore, thereby forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hearing this joyful good news, let us rise and lift our voices. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the assurance that we have in your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for all the men and women who have raised us in the faith from generation to generation, going back to the beginning of the Scriptures. This is an assurance that we are guaranteed, even though we cannot visibly see it. It is not with eyes that we look, but with faith. And not the faith of man or institutions or even our, of ourselves, but the gift of faith given to us by your Holy Spirit. Continue to encourage us in this faith, even when we step out of this building. Give us the courage to live out our faith every single day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. morning. Our first excuse me. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6, which can be found in your pew Bible on page 20. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, O sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? 
And Abram also said, I, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, this man will not be your heir, but a son coming from your own body will be your heir. He took him outside and said, look up at the heavens and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The New Testament reading this morning is, comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, and 39 and 40. It can found, be found on your pew Bible, uh, page 1874. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. These were all commended for their faith. Yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Luke chapter 12, verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be worried about your life or what you will eat or what you will, about your body or what you will wear. Life is more than food, and more, and the body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. How much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest. Consider the lilies that grow. Do they not labor or spin? Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your Father knows that you need them. But seek His kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted, where no, fee no, no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for our hymn of the day. In the name of Jesus, amen. This morning, we're going to be really excited because you and I, we're starting a new sermon series for the month of August. And it's going to be going through the book of Hebrews. It's all about stories. It's all about our stories of faith. The stories that you and I tell. You and I, we all love stories, whether it's a book I prefer audiobooks. I'm a slow reader. Whether it's an audiobook, whether it's a television program, a movie, podcasts, I think are a thing now too. Young, younger people who are same as my age. Um, I think podcasts are a thing now. We all love stories. Stories are awesome. They help us remember, they connect us, and they keep us connected to each other. 
Lord, I love just as you and I, we all have stories and we always tell them at family gatherings, God has a story too. What I love is God's story connects to us. God has a story too. God's story connects to us. And he uses his people and continues to use his people today to tell his story. The awesome part is that you and I, we're going we're gonna to hear more about that story today from our New Testament reading in the book of Hebrews. We're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 11. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking at some book covers. We're going to be looking primarily also at the covers, or what I call the covers of Hebrews 11. We're going to be looking at the first three verses and the last two verses. And what we're going to do is we're going to use those covers and we're going to gain this knowledge, this idea of what this entire chapter is all about, this whole story. Now, I've always heard the old idiom, the old phrase, you don't judge a book by its cover, but to be honest, brothers and sisters, I think that's I think that's kind of funny because I brought some book covers here this morning and if you can't see it up here you can see it on the screens overhead what I have with me is the fundamental fundamental biblical Hebrew and fundamental biblical Aramaic it's kind of a bland papyrus looking cover and there's scribbles on it I enlarged some of those scribbles I had to read this book in undergrad. It was, let me tell you, it was a blast. Um, Based on this cover, based on this cover of this book right here, who would would wanna read this? Let's raise some hands. Would would anyone here wanna read this or is this a, there's someone in the back? Not many of you though, right? This is the one that you keep on your shelf to make it look like you read it. Next book I brought with me. Oh, this is a classic. This is awesome. All right, just based on the cover alone, I can tell you that I would want to read it. Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. I love this book. I actually remember my mom one time made me green eggs and ham. Really no better than normal eggs and ham. But regardless, we have a funky orange color. We got a cool title with with neat with, with a cool letter spacing and, and paragraph spacing, green eggs and ham. We got a picture of green eggs and green ham and this dog looking man with a top hat scrutinizing this green eggs and ham. Now, compared to the fundamentals of biblical Hebrew versus green eggs and ham, based on the cover of this book, Who would rather read Green Eggs and Ham? Let me see some hands. A lot more of you. A lot more of you. And this is what I find rather funny and what I love about our reading today. When you and I, we're going to be looking at Hebrews chapter 11. And so looking at Hebrews chapter 11, just the first, the front cover and the back cover, you and I are going to get an idea of what this chapter is about. I like about covers is it gives us a decent understanding of what's in between the lines. So just like any cover you and I are going to look, we're going to start the story and look at the front cover. We're going to look at verse 1. And I'll read it. If you guys want to open your pew Bibles, you can. However, it says, Now faith is being sure of what we have hoped for and certain of what we do not see. This verse right here, this very first verse on this front cover of the book, what I love about this is it gives us our title right away. Our title can be um, Now Faith, or it could just be Faith. And based on this title, you and I, 
we know that this entire passage, this entire story in the book, uh, in the chapter Hebrews 11, is going to be about faith. Now, what about faith, though? Faith is a pretty broad term. It's one of those terms that when you say it, everyone has a different opinion about it, whether it's my faith, you got to have more faith, that person's faith, faith in something, faith in faith itself. Faith covers this broad array of terms in our language today. So what is so important about faith? What I love in the passage here, and unfortunately what we do not see right away, is that faith... Faith is the guarantee of the hope that we have. Now, many English translations, they're going to say things like assurance, like we sang today in our first hymn, Blessed Assurance. They might use that word to, to say uh, what faith is. Others might say a sure thing or be sure of. However, none of these words, none of these, the words we have today is really going to give us a true meaning of what this faith is. What this faith is, and what I love so much about it, is this faith is a contract. When we see this word, when we see assurance or sure thing, what it means is that this faith is a legally binding contract. It means back in the day when someone was to buy a house or they'd buy a deed to a land, they would have a contract. And so signatures would be signed on this contract and you had a proof on a piece of paper you had in writing that that land, that thing, was yours. You own it. Today, it's, it's much like if, I don't know how many of you saw, oh, I, I actually walked here today, that's the awesome thing. Um, there will be days where there's this really awesome looking Kia Soul out front with this really sweet olive green color, tinted windows, Ohio plates, it's amazing. I love it. It's my vehicle, right? I can tell you guys, though, all day long that it's my vehicle. However, what really proves that it is my vehicle, my amazing car, is the fact that my name is on the title. I could tell you all day long till I'm blue in the face that that's my car, but if my name is not on the title, I do not own it. And so that's what you and I have today in our assurance, our sure thing of faith. It is a contract, it is a legally binding contract that you and I have, that we have 100% proof of this hope that we have. Faith is a signed contract for our hope. What I love about this too is Many times you'll hear, you got to have more faith. You got to have faith in something. Put your faith in something. Well, I hate to tell you, faith is not something that you or I do. Faith is a gift from God, and it's given to us by God. This is a fact. In fact, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For the grace you have been saved through faith, this is not your own thing, is a gift of God. So this faith, it's a signed contract. Faith is a gift. And what I love, what this faith does, why this faith is so important, is that it shows us that God's promises are real. Today, you and I, we we often get busy. We get busy with our lives. We get stuff thrown in our schedules where we have everything going on and there's days where you and I we have those promises of God but we don't there's days where like I don't feel it is it is it real to me and this is what I love about you is the fact that what you feel and what I feel those those days that we don't have great days those days that you and I mess up this faith since it's not our own is not something that can be diminished because it is a gift from God. And so this faith that I keep going back to shows us the real promises of God. 
Now you might be asking, so what? So what if these promises are real? These promises, they go all the way back to the beginning of Scripture. I mean, what do they mean for me today in Tyler, Texas in 2022? For that, I want to jump to the back cover of Hebrews chapter 11. The back cover, and it begins at verse 39. It says, These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. God had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Today, in our reading, you might have heard a group of people mentioned as the ancients. They were referred to in this chapter when it says, these were all commended. You and I, we're going to hear more about them next week, which is awesome as we're going to dive a little bit more into the middle of Hebrews chapter 11. However, what's important for us to know today is that a promise way farther back than any of us a promise all the way back to the beginning of creation after the first man and women for since they fell there was a promise a promise that generations and generations of men women and children have waited for a promise that you and I have today a promise that you and I have been given, not one that you and I have to wait on, not a promise that you and I have to wait years and years to get, not a promise that is waiting in the distance or that we are so far away from having it. This promise that you and I have today, it's here with us. And what I love is our faith that allows us to see this promise. In the book in, he, in, in chapter 11, it says that this promise, it's unseen. And yet it's through faith that you and I can see it, not with our eyes, but with our faith. This promise, this promise was sent to earth, came to earth in the form of a man. This promise didn't look like you'd expect. This promise willingly went to the cross. And this promise died a brutal death. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, was beaten and crucified. He was put in the grave. And yet, if we go to the next chapter, we see that Jesus, he's no longer in the grave. When you look in the grave, he is unseen, and the stone is moved away. This promise, he appeared to his people. Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples and his people. He's gone to prepare a place for you and for me. And he will come back for his people. This promise, this promise of Jesus, the promise that you and I can come here and receive his body and blood, and our sins are forgiven, and that we will have eternal life with him, is a promise that we have today. What I love about this promise is it doesn't allow anyone to judge us. Just as we talked about judging a book by its cover, yeah, you could judge us a book maybe by its cover, but when the world says your cover is filthy, 
Your cover is disgusting. Your cover is tattered and torn. It's smeared with stains and ugliness and all sorts of sin. Insert whatever sin you have in your life. When someone points out that cover, you can say it's not about my cover, but it's about what God has written on the inside. It's about what God has written, and he wrote it in Christ's blood. He wrote life where there should be death. Period. End. There's no other book of things that you and I need to do. There's no trilogy. There's no movie adaption with extra material. There's none of this added. Life. Through the promise of Jesus. Period. Jesus has you and me from cover to cover today, tomorrow, and for eternity. Amen. We've heard the word of God both read and proclaimed. Please rise as we confess, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on the screens overhead. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Amen. of heaven and earth. may be seated. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, increase our faith in you, your ways and your will. Preserve us from reliance on our own plans and on natural powers that we would always trust in you, and be counted righteous in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, you have raised up children for Abraham from all the nations through faith in your word and promise. Bless your church on earth by the descendants of Abraham, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, defend your people against the assaults and temptations of the adversary. By your Holy Spirit, grant them righteousness in Christ. Let them shine like the stars in the heavens forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy. God Almighty, teach the rulers of the nations how small and fleeting their power really is. Shepherd them by the preaching of your church into the ways of peace and fix their eyes on the better country that is to come that they would rule in loving service to those in their charge. Lord, in your mercy. You call us to cast our anxieties upon you because you care for us. In the midst of their tribulation, bless your people with peace. We especially pray for healing for Laurel Schneeby, Dolores Schneeby, Jennifer Verhage, Tammy Polly, Harrison Greenstreet, Vic Massey, David Smith, Mike Garrett, and Pam Howard. We pray for the early childhood ministry and all families that they serve we especially pray for infant teachers Andrea Tippett, Gloria Holly, and Desi Ellen. We pray for comfort and hope for the families and friends of Jan Toomey and Ruth Smith who recently entered their eternal rest. 
We lift up our military personnel, asking for your peace, protection, and strength. Garrett McSpadden, William Wallace, Mike Wallace, James Waldrop, Morlene Cobb, Christopher Bentley, Dakota Hudson, Andrew Rosso, Dale Leathers, Jason Frugi, Joshua Blayla, and Mackenzie Sanchi. For all for whom we pray, as they consider your care of flour and feed, remind them of your eternal care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, knowing that you will hear the prayers of your people and answer us with your mercy, providing all things needful and beneficial to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we continue in worship by uh, receiving the offering. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give you thanks for your boundless love 
shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him unto death that we might not die eternally. But because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Sabaoth, adored, heaven and earth are full of claim. Shout the glory of your name. Sing Hosanna. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation. You have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the uh, communion assistants to come forward.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May it strengthen you and preserve you in the body and soul and a life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you've refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I said you rise to receive a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord be gracious to you. Amen. that me? All right, go ahead and sit. <laughs> got, got a few announcements for you. Um, how did the youngster do? Right, yeah. <laughs> First time I've ever gotten to say that, so that's fun. The youngster. <laughs> um, a lot of the same announcements we had last week, our LWML event coming up, uh, Mission Trip Sunday coming up. A um, few new announcements, confirmation, pre-confirmation. So if you know the students, uh, fifth through eighth grade, man, we would love for them to be in our, our um, weekday classes uh, where we get to kind of learn the basics of our Lutheran faith, right? Um, also, August kind of begins a lot of our milestone ministries. So for instance, today, um, especially with our youngsters, so our four-year-olds are meeting Miss Laura and their parents in... Uh, conference room two today to kind of look at worship bags and and how to to be a part of worship right um, I believe next week the five-year-olds uh, they they get their first Bible and they kind of go through with their Bible and so just be um, look out for that if you have a four or five um, any of those young ages we have a bunch of different milestones going on this month and let's see lastly um, to do with our ECM uh, throughout the week we are in desperate need of um, infant room teachers. Um, those are so special when they're dealing with those little tiny loved ones. Uh, we'd love somebody with experience. Uh, if you know of anybody who would fit kind of the description we have in our announcements today, um, please be in prayer and direct them towards us. Um, with that, uh, kind of not in here, but looking towards the future, you know, we, we are starting the new year. We're starting to have big events start coming back up. So, like, for instance, September is the fair. Um, October is a big block party. November is murder mystery. Um, things to really get excited about. Not only there are a lot of fun to participate in, but a lot of fun to serve in as well. So just keep those in the back of your mind. I believe that's it. Who's going to close us? Please stand. <laughs>
go in peace serve the lord